Hello, I hope everyone's having a good day and is ready for another video. Today is a little different. This isn't an underrated throwers video. This is more of a video about the difference between weight throw and hammer throw. Right off the bat, I should say that if you want to throw hammer far, you should not do weight if you have a choice in the matter. And the, there are reasons, multiple reasons why that I'll explain later in the video. But I know some people, like me, did not have a choice uh, in the matter and had to throw weight because you're in the NCAA and your coaches make you. But, um, yep, yeah, that's right off the bat. All right. And let's get started. Today I have chosen Connor McCall's uh, high school record with the weight. Now, high school weight is the same as women's college weight which is 25 pounds let's see this I'm pretty sure this was 28 meters now if you know Connor McCullough who I think is kind of underrated but then not really he hasn't really done much his technique is really good but he, he doesn't qualify, but we'll, we'll just glance over that. Um, <clears throat> so, right off the bat, let's just analyze this throw real quick, and then we'll get into the differences. Right off the bat, he does one wind. Counters extremely well. So, he heel turns the first throw. <clears throat> I mean, oh my god, the first turn. As you would in a normal... Um, a normal turn in a three turn as opposed to a toe turn in the first turn now some people in weight they toe turn the first turn even if they do a three turn just because a lot of them are four turners by nature and hammer it's just very hard to do a four turn in weight because of how much it weighs it's just hard to counter it that long but toe turns they, they aren't as fast, but they're able to get more over the left as opposed to a heel turn. Okay, but we'll continue. So catches right there for first turn. Catches beautifully. Hammer. I mean, not hammer. Weight slightly back. Beautiful balance position. I love how he turns all the way. Mostly. He kind of makes it stay with his right. But we'll get to that in a minute. Just very tight turns. And a really, really nice finish. <clears throat> now, let's get into the differences. So you'll notice. If you know anything about Connor McCullough and you've watched him throw a hammer, you'll probably say that this looks very similar. And yes, this does look very similar to the, to the way he throws hammer. And the reason he can get away with that is because this isn't a 35-pound weight like a college thrower. This is a 25, so he he can get a, because he's really strong. Obviously, he throw 20 meters. He can he can he can throw a 25 pound weight like this because this is basically like a modified short wire for him, basically. <clears throat> so, if he was doing a 35, I will say he is. There are slight differences. So in weight. One difference is the counter. So the counter, in weight, you're going to be a little lower than you would in hammer. Just because you just have to, just because it just weighs way more. So you have to just counter it more. Okay. And another thing is instead of picking up right here, or like right Instead of letting it turn all the way until you get like here and then picking up instead of already be picked up. He he uh, in hammer, he has to pick up a little earlier. And this is because one like the weight, you can't really be patient with it. You, ha you have to just go like a bat out of hell right at a start. You can't really like accelerate it. You don't have that much time to accelerate because there's no wire, you don't. There's not a lot of patience required for it because every every movement is just sped up times ten, 
compared to hammer because it doesn't take as long for the ball to go around okay so everything's sped up so you're not going to be able to to work the ground as long okay and another thing that he does is he has really good connection with the right now normally I know this is a style on hammer and I think he does throw a hammer like this too where he keeps the ball on his right side instead of letting it go past but this kind of technique works really well for for weight for a simple just because it just it it's good because this technique is really good for people who are just super explosive and super fast and because everything speeds up when you throw it weight it's good to keep it on the right side instead of letting it pass because you could lose your connection with the ball and what I mean by letting it pass is letting it pass here while still grounded and having a lower orbit and I think you should have a lower orbit like if you're throwing a 35 pound weight you can't really get away with this high of an orbit. It needs to be a little flatter because you won't be able to be in the air this long or be count or like you, you can't counter it like this. If it's a 35, you won't be able to move it like this. Everything will be just super low and your orbit will be lower and you'll get more out on it instead of up. Um so Another thing you want to do is, okay, well, another difference is, let's see, sorry, I'm looking at my notes. Oh, yes, the wind. I should have probably started with this. So, he does one wind. Another, like, most people don't do winds in weight unless you're just super strong. Because it's just harder to get started. Most people, you'll see them go like, so like they'll, it's hard to show you in this format, but I'll try. So they'll, they'll go like right here. So it starts right here. They'll go one side and just like kind of, how do I say it? Like swing it one side, swing it to the other, and then go, go wide and swing it around and then start the turn. Instead of just doing a wind. So it's kind of like a modified like. It's kind of like a drill kind of start. So you go one, two, and then go. Or you bring it like between the legs. Go right, left, right, around. I know that's not much of an explanation. But like, I mean, if you watch videos of weight, you'll, you'll see. You'll see what I mean. Like a lot of people do it. So, I personally, I mean, it's a preference choice. If you're a hammer thrower, by nature, I would personally start with a toe turn if you were a four turner. Just so it doesn't screw up your hammer that much. Oh, yes, that's what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> so, the reason I say if you want to be a good weight, like a good weight, like a good hammer thrower, you should not throw weight. I know sometimes you don't have a choice. It's for multiple reasons. The biggest is it screws up your timing. Because everything is sped up, you, you have to throw a little differently. You have to throw with a little count, a little more of a counter. You have to pick everything up later. It changes your orbit. It changes everything. So it takes a long time to get used to the hammer again. And it really throws off your timing for quite a while. I've had I've had teammates that have like gone with a month with after indoor with just terrible hammer practices just because they had to do weight and it really screwed them up and not to mention it's just so hard on your body just because it's just the sheer just torque you have to do like on your body for the event <clears throat> okay and um yeah, so th that's basically the biggest reason why I think if you want to be a good hammer thrower, you should not be 
a, you should not really do weight. Now, I think weight w is a good tool for a special strength, but then again, I would rather just use a short wire hammer. But if you don't have access to that, then yeah, weight is also a good like training. Like You could do heavy wines with it and stuff like that. But I mean, <clears throat> that's why you don't really see a lot of really good European hammer throwers do weight. This is really only a U.S. thing. That's why they don't have weight throw in the indoor world champs. Because it's really only the U.S. I can't think of another country that does weight like, like this. So, like we do. So, yeah. So, just to summarize... And so, what, if you are forced to do weight... Sorry, I'm not done. Sorry. <laughs> um, if you want to do weight... I mean, well, I don't know anybody who wants to do weight, but... <laughs> if you are forced to do weight... Um, I would say the biggest things you need to do is to have a... A lower orbit than than Connor here just because he's throwing a 25 as I've said before so he can get away with the, this kind of orbit but I know you can't really see the ball it's like right there you kind of well, man, like damn, hold on. you want it so the ball's like right there no actually ah, it's right there I would personally want it to be like right there and be a lot lower. Okay. And then really there will be no like up and down. I mean you shouldn't really have that much up and down. This is his style. And it works. But I. So I would be a lot lower. In the legs. Have a lot lower orbit. Be a little more back. A little more of a counter. So shoulders a little more back. While still saying long. I would personally recommend if you're a four turner to do, start with a toe turn. Although, I mean, it's just a preference thing. I mean, you have to find what works for you. And um, I would also say the one thing I do think he does a good job of is keeping it, keeping connection with the ball the entire time. Like, he's in constant motion with his right. Really works it well. I really like... And, and um, so, in weight throw, I, I really like landing on the ball of the foot instead of flat-footed to do the flat foot the toe. Just because I think that's a little... Like, that really works in hammer. But in weight, I think just everything just happens so fast. It's just easier. Especially if you're not going to do it very much. It's just easier just to do... Just land on the ball of your foot. Just because it's just easier just to turn off that. But if you're super good, yeah, you can... I mean, you have to find what works. Again, like, most people will probably do, like, what, four or five meets in an indoor season. Maybe more if you're really good and you go to, like, indoor nats and, like, nationals and stuff. But realistically, you're going to do, like, three or four meets. So, I mean, like... I don't know. If I was, if I was your coach, I wouldn't put too much effort into it i would focus more on outdoor when you have like 12 meets or like more so but um yeah i mean again like weight i think is there's a place for it sometimes you're just forced to and if you're forced to you might as well just try and be good at it at the end day we are athletes and we want to be the best at everything so um, but I think it, it's an overlooked tool to use in a special strength for hammer. Or if someone's really having trouble countering, you can make them throw weight. Because if you don't counter weight, you're screwed. Um, or if you just don't have a super heavy like short wire, what you could do is put chains on a weight 
on a weight. And and there and then you have a really really nice heavy short wire special strength. Um but I think I want to talk a little bit about the short wire. And I guess weight does teach you a couple things. One, it teaches you how to counter. Two, it teaches you how to like really be connected with it. Three, I think it's a good like over over speed training, like when sprinters sprint down a hill and like when they're getting ready to peak to feel themselves like go really fast than they normally would on a flat surface. It's kind of the same concept. Or like when you throw light implements. Um it it has like the same effect because it just makes you just makes everything it it basically just exposes your weaknesses with a short wire or weight. It it tells you if you're countering enough, if you're low enough, if you're working the legs, if you're just slow, if you're connected with the ball or not. It just teaches you a lot. Personally, I I would start with the short wire, but if someone's really having trouble with it, I would say go to the weight just for like a little bit. Um, and just do turns with it, honestly, just to make them feel it. Um, but yeah. Um, I, yeah, I mean, other than that, oh, the other thing is in weight, you need a lot more, you need tighter steps. So like in three turn, you usually go like a little wider and that's mostly do with a heel turn. But um, you just need tighter steps just because you just need to just counter everything sooner. So when you do tighter steps, you'll be able to counter it a lot sooner and a lot longer. Okay. So, yeah. Other than that, I'd say let me know if you have any questions. And I hope everyone has a good day. See ya.